Hello everybody, Brad Johnson here. In this video we're going to be talking about coherency, rebound, and transcending conflict. So the first thing we're going to look at is coherency. Now Adronos has shared that the law of attraction would represent that of an incomplete law. That we're looking into coherency as a type of magnetic and that the law of magnetics would basically apply that we have attraction and we have repulsion. Right? So if we have an object here, that which attracts, that which repels. So basically this is referred to as coherency. So the ability of coherency is being able to look into the universe of vibration, frequency, and energy all together. And understand that we're doing more than just attracting things to us. We're also looking into repulsion. We're also looking into other aspects of vibration that is neither being attracted nor repelled, but becoming much more stationary. But the key is to move into a vibration where there are group tendencies of experiences rather than just the idea of singular experiences that I'm just going to go ahead and attract a bunch of money. Rather than just thinking that that's going to be your single goal, you're looking into all of these different forms of possibilities to align to the coherencies that can eventually bring about a certain type of outcome. But so there, there is a lot more to the aspect of what has been termed as a law of attraction. It represents a distorted law, an incomplete law. And it's not just about what you attract. It's being able to look at everything around you in life as the opportunity of coherency to bring you into a much more deeper group-based understanding about how you connect to everything, about how everything else connects together with you. So, looking into coherency, what is it that causes incoherency? How do we become incoherent? Well, that comes through emotion. When we are raging out, when we're aggressive, when we're angry, when we're depressed, when we're extremely sad, we become incoherent because this ball of energy becomes our entire world and we miss all of the other potential states of vibration that we can coherently connect to. And so we become incoherent by completely attaching ourselves to a certain emotional level. So emotions, yes, negative and positive, they, they, they do take place, but emotion is such a strong energetic that it bottles us in. It confines us in within a small orb and that becomes our reality. And when we're trapped inside that emotion, we become incoherent because we don't allow these other vibrations, these other frequencies, to be part of our reality. We're stuck inside that emotion saying, nope, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve this, I can't do anything else, I want to do anything else, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm raging, 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 depressed, 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 and nothing else matters. Right? So we do not invite in the opportunity of other coherent vibrations because we are stuck in incoherency in a feedback loop caught inside this orb that represents this one particular emotion or perhaps a sequences of emotions that take us out from our natural, genuine, present selves. So, that would represent the aspect of coherency. All of these opportunities right now that exist around you are potential candidates for coherency and that we represent a, str a stream of coherent vibrations ourselves. We are not just based upon one thing. We are many things. We are that of a leader. We are that of a follower. We are that of a teacher. We are that of a student. We are that of having charisma. We are that of having intelligence. We are that of making blue our favorite color. We are that of having a new haircut, like myself, right? <laughs> but all of these thousands and thousands and thousands and even millions of things that represent ourself is a coherent band of vibrational frequency. That's who we are. 
So it's not about looking at the aspect of a singular attraction. It's about looking into all of the availability and possibilities that are here for you right now, that you can interlock together with, that you can weave together like a ribbon, and being able to move past the idea of a certain singular outcome. Right? For example, someone may want to learn to become a spiritual teacher or a healer in that way. Well, rather than feeling you're going straight for that one singular goal, you're looking into all of these other ribbons of vibration and bringing them together and saying, here I am being educated. Here I am being more aware of energy. Here I am starting to exercise my body. Here I am taking care of myself, eating properly, getting a good diet going you know, sharpening my intelligence, all of this, right? So we have all of these different strands looking into how your attractions are moving you more into a group consensus of possibility rather than just one finite singular idea, okay? So that is coherency. But what about rebound? How is it that we attract or become coherent with rebound altogether? Well... Basically, for example, if we have a relationship here, and Lord knows this has certainly happened to me in the past, right? Is that we have partner A and partner B. And that partner B and partner A are now just starting to get into a nice romantic relationship. They're involving themselves with each other. They're enjoying each other's company. Everything feels good. Partner A feels on top of the world. He just is in so in, he's just so in love with his partner. He wants to just make the world revolve around them, right? And so, partner A starts throwing all of this love, all of this expression of giving. And giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and letting that partner know how much they appreciate them and want to give to them and give to them and give to them. Now, partner B is being overwhelmed by this. Sure, that partner really appreciates their new partner. They're really starting to like them. They're really starting to enjoy their company. But they're feeling very overwhelmed through this ability of partner A wanting to throw all of this goodness towards them. It's not to say that partner A doesn't have a very good heart. They certainly do. But what happens is that they create a voltage. And this voltage becomes so intense as partner B's vibration is like this. It becomes so intense that it creates a short circuit. And partner B is now overwhelmed. They don't know what to do as it relates to their new partner because they feel that they're constantly receiving all of this giving that they feel they don't personally deserve. And so because their energy field cannot digest all of this overwhelming giving from the other partner, it creates this short circuit. It's like putting a device, plug it into a wall, and basically having that device receive way too much voltage. It overloads and poof, may just want to explode. Well, that's exactly what happens here. This becomes an explosion. This expression of giving. It's not to say, again, that partner A is not a bad person. They're just a very, very loving person, but they're seeing their, their own self in lack. And because they see their own self in lack, they have to try and throw all this giving onto another partner because even partner A doesn't see that they are inadequate and that they have to give and give and give and give and put so much onto their partner that their partner now just, you know, short circuits. And now we have rebound that happens. So now this whole situation from what was once giving and, and you know, just being able to express yourself and wanting to give so much to this partner now turns argumentative, now turns into an emotional blow up and may even lead into both partners parting their own way, going their separate ways. Because this partner is overwhelmed. They don't know what to do to basically try and assimilate all of this energy that's been brought to them. So how does this happen? What took place here? 
Well, basically, if this is the loving vibration of two people in love, and this becomes the applied aspect of coherency from one partner to another, giving so much, or it could also come to the other point, that there's not enough of that love, there's not enough of that energy that is allowing a compatible partnership to come together. It's maybe like this, right? There's not, a, not, a, not enough love expressed, not enough of that, right? So it can either be less than or greater than. But basically, it's not able to meet this coherent vibrational sine wave, and it creates a rebound, right? So if there is not an adequate state of coherency, it's not to say that it needs to be exact, right? Sometimes it can go kind of like this, but you know what? That's okay, right? That's still pretty decent. There may be a little bit of shaky ground here, but they're still a very happy couple. But if it's going off into the extremes, where it's too much or even too little, then basically we have a rebound. That vibrational coherency is not on the wavelength to match up with those two extreme polar polarities of coherency. And so we have a short circuit. And so we get a rebound that takes place. Right? It's the same thing as if a person was to go for the lottery. This is a big question I get a lot. Brad, how do I win the lottery? How can I get, how can I win, get all the winning numbers and win the lottery? What's, what's the secret to that, right? The secret is to be the vibration of the fortune that you see in the lottery. And if you're not able to vibrate to the fortune that represents the reward within the lottery, then if you by chance do win the lottery, it's not because you've matched the frequency, it's because you have karmically won the lottery. Which means a majority of lottery winners, and this is actually being uh, shown in case studies, a majority of lottery winners would almost feel that their ability to win the lottery is like a curse. Because now certain things start to happen to them after they win the lottery. They may get taxed like crazy. They may get breakups through their relationships. They may get into drugs. They may get into alcohol. They may lose a lot of their money because they feel they have to spend, 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 and never end that overwhelming thirst for greed, right? All of these things can happen. And there has been this that has basically happened to about, say about 70 to 80%, somewhere around there as it relates to lottery winners, is they feel they've gone through hell by winning the lottery. And this is what happens. We get this with that, right? We basically get incoherency. We become incoherent because we are not applying ourselves. We are not able to align to the coherency of what it represents to have that fortune. So there is no big secret to win the lottery. You simply have to Feel yourself being the energy of that fortune. If you don't, and if you end up winning the lottery, it is a karmic situation. You're basically succumbing to the aspects of karma and saying that, well, you need to work out in the aspect about how you're going to handle all of this physical fortune because you do not see true fortune within yourself. You do not see spiritual fortune. Right. So this is where there can be incoherencies. It's the same, same thing with people who are successful entrepreneurs, millionaires, billionaires. Their business is exploding like crazy and they had no idea it would take off like this. They really don't know what to do. Rather than being very happy, they're miserable. Because again, their business is like this and their vibration is like that. Right? It cannot pair up. It becomes incoherent. And so this is where there can be rebounds taking place. So a rebound is the result of being incoherent to a certain vibrational frequency, be it through a relationship, be it through wanting to play the lottery, be it through business, be it through other forms of self-development, whatever it may be. Wanting to be this person and knowing that you can never measure up to that, that person because you feel that you don't give yourself permission to become that person and now you get these sine waves of intensity this short circuit happens and you get a rebound, right? 
So that's the aspect of how rebounds themselves are forged. So what do we have to do? We need to become the frequency of that which we know we deserve. We need to validate the value of ourselves and make sure that we're playing within that sine wave, right? So if it's a relationship and you can feel that your partner is going like that, then you're being able to adapt to that energy. You feel that your partner is in that alignment. He or she doesn't want all this big materialized stuff, doesn't want you to constantly give and give and give yourself until you bleed yourself dry, doesn't want you to feel that you're slacking off too much and you're not really caring about the relationship. You're going, you know, a little, you know, one mile an hour here. You want to work together with that energy. Again, the sine wave may not be perfect, but there is a somewhat compatibility there that's allowing this relationship to build because then they will adapt to your frequency and you to theirs. And now that creates a strong coherency, right? So that would represent the aspect of rebound, is taking on too much, is going into a certain vibration that you were sure you could handle, but it was either overwhelming you or underwhelming you, and you weren't able to keep up it short circuits and it rebounds based upon emotional states, accidents, maybe physical accidents in that sense, etc. A lot of things can happen through the state of a rebound. Okay, so transcending conflict. How does this work? Well, to transcend the aspect of conflict where you are no longer within a conflicting or argumentative situation anymore, we firstly have to look into what is known as equivalent exchange. Okay? In order for one to obtain something, something of equal value must be given. Now, there is something within a lot of the social psychological roots that refer to as, let's see if I can spell this right. Reciprocity, I believe it's referred to as, or being the ability of reciprocating energy. And this is indeed very true as it relates to the idea of equivalent exchange. You give a person $20, <clears throat> there is an equivalent exchange that brings about the value of that $20 back to you. It may not be another $20, but something that would connotate a value as it relates to that equivalent exchange that comes together. Now, what many th theorize through recipro... I'll try and spell, uh, pronounce this right. Reciprocity is that as you reciprocate that energy, again, you're giving back to that person, but what a lot of the social psychologists feel is that that person will try and give even more of themselves to that situation. And this does happen. However, just like what we talked about, that will create a rebound. Okay? It's even the same thing as when you know that you're in your loving vibrational state and you perform the idea of excessive reciprocity to another person. Maybe let's say, for example, it's a homeless man right? And they're just begging and pleading for food or begging and pleading for money, whatever it may be. And you're basically just, oh, okay, here's, I'm going to be really, really generous today. Here's a hundred bucks for you. Wow, that's great. You're a very, very friendly person. Basically, all you did though was feed this person's need to survive even more. Okay? So that's not to say that it's a wrong thing to do. It certainly is good that you're contributing, that you're giving money to homeless people to help them out. I've certainly done the same thing myself. But really it just comes down to the point where when you look at this person who's basically calling out for help, what would be the balanced equivalent exchange here in that way? Well, one idea may be to sit down with this fellow and have a conversation with him. And just start talking with him. And that your loving presence, your ability to actually spend time with this person and make them feel valuable has actually caused them to transcend the need to survive. A 
person came down and sat with me and I was able to talk to them. I was able to share my story and they were listening to me throughout the whole time. And it wasn't about money. It wasn't about giving food. It was just the idea that they were listening to me. They were giving me feedback. I don't feel like I need to be in survival mode anymore, right? Now what you've done is through that short encounter, maybe it was an hour or so, whatever happened, you were able to become that reciprocating catalyst of that person's energy. And now a shift has taken place. The next day that person may get up and no longer feel that they need to beg for the aspect of food or beg for the aspect of money in that sense. They now see this state of value that has triggered within themselves. And now they're moving their life into a new direction. It's not to say that's going to happen with all homeless people, but this is just the aspect of an example. It's not about the idea of having to throw money at them and thinking that that's going to resolve the whole situation. Because basically what that does is that creates a pity, right? So we pity a person saying, oh, you're on the street, you're homeless, you're not eating. Hmm, here's a hundred bucks. There you go. Hope you feel better, right? So that is a very generous gesture of you. But that, does that resolve the situation about what it is that you are attempting to experience with coherency here? No, not really. What you're basically doing is that there was something sorrowful. There was something in regards to you taking pity upon a person and saying, here's a hundred bucks. Sure, you may give them some money so that they can you know, maybe get some shelter for the night, get some food, etc. But then again, they'll come back and they'll want this again, right? So the whole idea is that these opportunities are presenting us with a situation of bringing true compassion together, right? True compassion does not have to relate to the idea of having to throw money at a problem to think it's going to go away or to have some type of means to an end, some type of materialism that's going to create a resolution between this person you're meeting on the street and yourself, right? It's always an opportunity that's there. It's sitting down with this person and talking to them and saying, how's your day going? Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your journey. And then I'll tell you about myself and what I'm doing, right? Now you're having a conversation. This person just feels on top of the world. Somebody's actually talking to them. They're not ignoring them. They're not just throwing pennies or quarters into a jar and then walking away, right? It's showing that there is a greater compassion there. So that's a reciprocation of energy. This represents a feeling of compassionate, unconditional love. You're showing compassionate, unconditional love for your fellow brother, for your fellow sister. And this is what shifts everything. And this is what transcends equivalent exchange and reciprocity. That becomes transcended. You have the ability to transcend equivalent exchange when you bring unconditional love into the picture. Okay? Otherwise, you stay within the confines of equivalent exchange, of reciprocity, that again represents a scale. Everything comes at a price. In order for you to achieve something, something of equal value must be given. Right? So we transcend conflict by... Staying in that love vibration, just as we did here within this example. So, I may have a very angry person come up to me and say, Brad, you're an asshole. You're an ass clown. You're a turd burglar. Yeah, sometimes I can be an asshole. Sometimes I can be an ass clown. Sometimes I can be a turd burglar. There's certainly aspects about myself like that that I admit to. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> and then they walk away, right? What did I just do? I didn't feel the need to defend myself, right? So basically, this is what happens to pretty much everybody I know, right? We instantly want to put up this protective blister. We want to put up this defense shield. You called me an asshole. All right, listen here, chump stain. All right, and then you start rolling up your sleeves, right? We want to go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. You insult my honor. You insult myself. You insult my image. Let's go. Again, it's happened to me. It's happened to all of us, basically. 
we put on this barrier. We put up this defensive shield and we want to defend ourselves. How dare this person call me those names? How dare this person accuse me of something? How dare this? How dare? How dare? How dare? And we just remain within that state of reciprocity, right? If we are constantly feeding that energy of defense, if we keep creating equivalent exchange as it relates to an argument, we're fighting, 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 and then we're fighting, fighting, fighting. Well, what happens when we drop this shield? You're this, you're that, and you're other thing. Yeah, you know, sometimes I can be this, sometimes I can be that, and sometimes I can be the other thing. I certainly do have that within me. Yeah, well, well, then you can be this thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Times I can be. And then they, they just lose their edge. That's the whole idea. That is how you transcend conflict. You bring your heart into the entire situation, right? And that, that's, that's the whole nature of yourself, is just being able to see yourself without an image. Being able to see yourself where the ego is turned down to the lowest minimal power it can be. And you're just walking along the street, you're feeling really good about yourself, you're in a heart-centered energy, and you know that's, that's the entire trick to it, is being able to make sure you're vibrating on that love level. Because when you're there, you diffuse all of this rage, these aggressive situations, this karmic aspect, right? It's like in light circuitry attunements, is that we take all that negative energy and we pour all this positive energy onto it, it now transcends. Why? Because love is stronger than hate. Love is stronger than fear. Because love does not need to defend itself. Okay? Love is not a product of ego. Okay? This needs to defend itself. This is a product of ego. Right? Any time that the ego is completely overinflated and we're getting raged, we're getting aggressive, we're getting frustrated, we're getting angry, that requires the idea of putting up this shield and, and having this uh, menacing field of energy with this person who is the aggressor. And this other person who just is completely in love with themselves, completely in love with life, just feels what it is to truly love. Even if that situation did happen, this person's raging on you and you give no invitation. There is no defensive shield here that's basically, you know, trying to, you know, put on the boxing gloves and spar match, right? None of that is happening. Those shields are brought down. And now you're just talking to the person. Yeah, so yeah, I absolutely admit that I, there's, there's, a, there's something of that within myself. Oh yeah, I can be that at times. Absolutely. Yeah, sure, I can be an asshole today. <laughs> but I'm going to be a loving asshole. How about that, right? <laughs> and uh, this person just doesn't know what to do because you're not fighting back, right? You're not putting up your shields. And so rage has nothing to leech onto, right? So if this is rage, this sine wave, and this is you cool as a cucumber, right? It has nothing to grasp. It's like trying to grasp water, right? But when you start to show rage yourself, oh, now rage has something to grasp onto. Got you, right? But as soon as you're in that love frequency, you're not offering any particular type of retaliation. You're just simply in your space. You're centered in the heart. Can't grab you. Can't do anything to you, right? That's how powerful love is. And it instantly diffuses anybody who's enraged. Instantly diffuses anybody who's aggressive. Because again, there's nothing to grasp onto. They have no other rage. Rage can't be met with rage. Fire can't be met with fire here, right? It's, it's the idea that there is no other fire that's coming together. And so what happens is you're this, this loving wind that is so strong, it just puts out anything, right? It's not a fire against fire situation. It's not a rage against rage situation. It's that you are quenching this entire encounter. And that is transcending conflict. Love will lead the way every single time, right? And I watch these videos where people are going into these riots and these protests and they're trying to challenge other people and say, oh yeah, what about your belief and my belief and all that stuff like that? Even though some of their beliefs are very hardcore, very extreme, if you try to meet their beliefs with your own extremism as well, itself, you're fueling a fire, 
right? You're basically just burning everything to a crisp all around you. Fire starts to ignite, fire from them starts to ignite, and you basically have this destruction everywhere, right? So when you're noticing that there are extreme points of view, yeah, it's okay. I get your point of view. I get what you're talking about. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that, right? You may not even be in full agreement with them, but who cares? It's not about the idea that someone has to be right, someone has to be wrong. You're looking at each other as family. We are interconnected here. We are one. We are all spirit. We are all love. We are all made out of the substance of compassion, right? And when that reflects within yourself, now there's no more arguments. There's no more fights because all you're doing is accepting everything. You're agreeing with everything because you are all these aspects of yourself. And you've harmonized with them. And you know that those will not be aspects of yourself, right? So again, someone calls me a turd burglar. Great. Love being a turd burglar. That's great. Thank you for that, that compliment. Well, that wasn't a compliment. I meant to hear a turd burglar. And I, it's fine. I accept that. Thank you so much. And it just walks away, right? They don't know how to respond because they're trying to get something attached to that rage and you're not giving it to them. And so, psh, dissolved. And then there's two options when that happens. When you basically put in this love vibration, two things can happen. One, that person walks because they don't want to be in that love frequency and they're not getting what they want. That craving is not there. They walk away. Number two, they become. Okay. So you are accepting all that and you're saying, you know what, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to call you all these things. I'm just having a hard day. Hey, hey, it's okay, man. I just want to thank you so much for your honesty. And it's like, wow, okay, thank you. Poof. Now you create this, this love blend, this coherency of love. And that's how you transcend conflict. If you're just going to keep raging and getting mad at something and defending yourself all the time, you're not making progress at all, right? You're basically staying in this blister. And again, I'll be the first to admit I've done a lot of this in the past where I've defended myself. I put on that protective blister and say, how are you doing? What are you talking about? Saying that to me and image, 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 image getting in the way, right? So this is something that really helps us as way showers, as shadow workers, moving into light workers and being able to respond with love, drop the ego. And I have yet to see any light worker who has actually done this and maintained that vibration, myself included, right? It's something where we're just naturally bred to want to conflict with other people because that's what society has basically shared through the programming and the upbringing that we've had. So we need to train ourselves. We need to train the ego and let it be all right with having this onslaught upon us and doing what we can to, in the best way that we can, drop this shield and allow this energy to come to you and it's just passing through you like a ghost because there's nothing for them to grip onto as it relates to conflict. So love is the answer to transcending conflict always. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions on this video or other videos on my channel, you can go ahead and visit my website, realitywhisperer.com. You can go in the contact section, of course. There's uh, private sessions, light circuitry attunements, digital courses, free media, and a lot more available there. So go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much, everyone. And I'll speak to you again in another perspective of the now. Namaste, and may it be well with you. Take care.